Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you. Thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit and empowering us, Lord, in the last one week, especially in the area of fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for a new a revival that is happening in the lives of uh, in our lives, Lord. Lord, thank you for taking us, Lord, to the next level of our uh, closeness to you. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing session, so Lord, that you are giving it to us. Lord, your word that says, uh, and it is so true, Lord, this, uh, this through this Bible study, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yes, Lord, it is absolutely your grace and your, your uh, favor that you've given to us in our life, in this life, to hear your, hear your word and to learn about your word and to practice your word. Thank you, Lord, for this great opportunity. Thank you for Brother uh, uh, Anthony and uh, uh, for, for, uh, for the mighty wisdom that you're showering through him to us, O oh Lord. Thank you for all the participants that you're bringing in that everyone may grow in you, in your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you can, uh, you can start, brother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, dear, yeah, yeah, okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege and this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for each one of us. Thank you for your purpose and plan for each one of us, Lord. Lord, you want to revive each one of us and you want to cause us to walk in your ways and we thank you for that. And we thank you for all that are teaching about the Holy Spirit. Lord, give us abundance of grace that we may walk with your spirit and know you and know your son, Lord, and fulfill the purpose God has um, for this generation. And we pray for each one of them, Lord, fill them with the Holy Spirit this day. Grant them a revelation, so God, heal the wounds of the heart, Lord. Break the strongholds of their life, Papa. Praying that you strengthen them with your strength, Lord. Father God, I pray that breakthrough will come in the nations they belong to, the towns and cities and villages they belong to, Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon this nation and these towns and cities and villages, God. Let a mighty breakthrough come in this place. I pray for a move of God's spirit upon this place. I pray for revival to break out in this place, O oh God. Father God, we pray that a breakthrough will come in Jesus' name. Let's all pray together. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Cover us with the blood of your Son. Cover us with the blood of your Son. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let build a wall of fire around us. Build a wall of fire around us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your angels encamp around us day and night. Let your angels encamp around us day and night. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Help us. Help us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Teach us. Teach us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us without measure. Fill us without measure. Without measure. Thank you, Jesus. So, hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah. Hmm. So, yesterday we were learning about uh, uh, regarding, uh, regarding prayer and regarding the importance of reading the word of God and receiving the body and blood of Christ in purity and faith. So a little bit, we'll continue with that and move to the next point. I remember um, in our retreats, whenever I ask uh, all the retreats, where is the body and the blood of Christ? So they say, many of them will say tabernacle. Mm. So I said, are you sure? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm sure in the tabernacle. I said, no, the body and blood of Christ is there in the tabernacle, but the body, of, body and blood of Christ is inside you. Because you are receiving the Holy Communion every day, so where do you expect the body and blood of Christ to be? Three, six, five days of the year, if you keep one host upon the other, 
how high it will become. So every day you are receiving the Holy Communion and every day you receive the body and blood of Christ and the body and the blood of Christ is inside you. Right. So that's, it. that's, that's something we need to believe, you know. So as you walk around and move around, know that the body and blood of Christ is inside you. Right. Many centuries ago, many of the missionaries while traveling, they used to carry with them the body and blood of Christ. Hmm. They used to make a medallion and put it inside that and they hang it on the neck. Hmm. And uh, many have shared that they had the divine protection, you know. Where robbers noticed something in the neck. But we thank God that we have the body and blood of Christ inside us. So we need to develop a faith in this area. That the body and blood of Christ is inside me. I remember one lady was sharing. One day when she was praying, uh, there was a manifestation of an evil spirit. An evil spirit appeared in her presence. When God allows only that happens, eh? so don't get afraid. So as the evil spirit appeared in, the, in, the, in her presence, she uh, said, uh, I command the blood of Christ inside me to manifest. And she says that the blood of Christ came out of her like uh, we, when we uh, garden the, when we garden the plants, water the plants, or when you wash our cars, we use a pipe. No? So like the blood came out, in, out of her and rushed towards that evil spirit. Mm. And the spirit disappeared. Mm. So we have to understand that uh, each time we receive the body and blood of Christ, the, uh, the, he is within us. And another important aspect, when we, after we receive the body and blood of Christ, we need to close our eyes and worship the Lord. Mm. Worship the body and blood of Christ. Adore the body and blood of Christ. See, when, when you see the monstrance where the Lord is, when he's exposed, or tabernacle, you bow down, no? So why do you bow down? When a sister or a priest or if a brother, religious brother is carrying the uh, Lord in the shiburim and moving to some place where to expose or maybe to give somebody the Holy Communion, if there are Catholics around that place, they will show a reverence. So in the same way, we have to understand that the body and blood of Christ is within us and we, we should learn to worship the body and blood of Christ. So that is something we need to do. So we go to the one very important point and that is that if you want to grow in the fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we need to hear his voice, voice of the Holy Spirit and we have to obey the voice. So we need to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And we need to obey. So whether it is a whisper or whether it is a still small voice or a thought, we need to obey the voice of God. My sheep, listen to my voice. We can see that verse. John chapter 10. Chapter 10, verses 27. Yeah. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. And no one will snatch, out of, snatch them out of my hand. My hand. So as long as you're following his voice, nobody can snatch you. Hmm. So my sheep hear my voice. So it is expected that the sheep of the Lord hears his voice. Yeah. And the Bible says here, I know them. So God, the Lord knows us personally. So he has an intimacy with us. And they, and, and they follow me. Mm. How do you follow Jesus? By obeying his voice. Mm. By obeying what he's saying. So when, when we, how do we obey? 
to obey when we hear his voice know his voice when we obey the voice trust and obey then we are following the holy spirit and i give them eternal life hmm. so obedient to the voice of god is very important and the next word is and they will never perish so eternally you will never perish when you obey the voice of the holy spirit no one will snatch them out of my hand no one will snatch them out of my hand so it may it looks that there are some forces moving around to snatch you out of the hand of the lord so when you follow his voice you you are secure you are safe so whenever the holy spirit whispers inside you whenever you feel the breath of the spirit moving in you when a spontaneous thoughts come into your mind when you hear the still voice of the holy spirit when the holy spirit speaks through it through a dream or a vision or an image coming in your mind we need to we need to be quick to obey i think in the book of isaiah isaiah 30 Verses twenty and twenty-one. So three zero, brother. Yeah, yeah, three zero. Three zero verses twenty and twenty-one. And and though though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself any more. But your eyes shall see you, te your teacher. Your teacher, yeah. So now we see here, uh, though the though the Lord may give you the bread of adversity and water of affliction, yet a teacher will not hide himself anymore. So it's it's mentioned that when you go through difficulties, your teacher will not hide himself. So here you you have to understand. Many people say that when I go when I go through difficult, tremendous peace, I feel tremendous power. i feel the tangible presence of the lord mm. so when we go through difficulty lord doesn't hide himself mm. so that we have to understand that's what the lord said when you go through fire i'll be with you when you go through the waters i will be with you so that being with you is not something that is it won't it, it is will be tangible mm. that means you will be able to experience his presence mm. his peace his presence and his strength with you mm. and that's what we see and then it's written here and when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left your ear shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way walk in it mm. so times of affliction and all tendencies they have to turn left or to the right and that i mean hear a voice behind you saying this is the way walk in it mm. so the next verse is very interesting then he will defile your silver covered idols and your gold plated images you will scatter them like filthy rags you will say to them away with you mm. see when you start hearing the voice of the lord in your life mm. you will get rid of the idols of your life like somebody was saying other day the golden calf mm. so there are a lot of idols in our life there are some uh, areas in our life where we have given um, places to things that is not of god so when you come to know see coming to a fellowship with the holy spirit you come to know his voice and that that becomes a living relationship you know and then what happens you'll get you'll get rid of the idols in your heart hmm then the next word is very interesting he will give, he will give rain for the seed with which you sow the ground and grain the produce of the ground which will be rich and plenteous So as you know the Holy Spirit, hear His voice. As you obey the voice, He will give rain for the seed with which you sow the ground, and and grain, the produce of the ground, which will be rich and plenteous. And so many things are mentioned there after that. So knowing the voice of the Lord is a beautiful thing, and it's it's a privilege because Jesus said in John ten twenty seven, "My sheep hear my voice." so no no christian is accepted accepted from the hearing the voice of god mm. all 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 are given equal opportunity 
to hear the voice of God. I have prayed with a lot of people, myself and Amla also, we have prayed with a lot of people. A lot of ordinary people we have prayed. A lot of ordinary people. Like, I don't know I, I, if I use the word like, it's like judging people, not highly educated, maybe, very lowly background, maybe. And then uh, they're not so much exposed to the retreats or maybe to, to the greater things of God. But they know the voice of God. They don't know also. When I ask them, uh, have you heard any time the voice of the Lord? They say no. Then I tell them what they have heard. Hmm. And then they say, yeah, 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 that all, yeah, that we have heard many times. Yeah, Lord, I heard many times, don't be afraid. And I've told, be strong. I've heard, be bold. And they say all that. Very, very ordinary people. Hmm. So I don't think anybody is exempt, exempted from uh, hearing the voice of God. If we are not hearing, we are at, I mean, uh, maybe we are at fault, you know. Draw to me and I will draw to I have met many, many people, very ordinary people who hear the voice of God. So that is why we have to know the voice of God and obey the voice of the Lord. Hmm. We have to obey the voice of the Lord. If the voice says, forgive, be forgive. If the voice says, pray, we sit and pray. Hmm. If the voice says to help somebody, we, we help someone. We are in Acts chapter 8, verses 29. And the Spirit said to Phil Philip, Go up and join this chariot. And then what happened? So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah, the prophet, yeah. and asked. Yeah, yeah. so we see here, um, um, the spirit is telling to run, to um, uh, run towards this chariot and join the chariot. Right. So what did Philip do? He, 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 immediately he ran, you know. Hmm. That we see many places in the Bible where we can see Holy Spirit said and they obeyed. When the Holy Spirit said, don't go, they yeah. did not go. I think that is found in that verse uh, where we find here where when the Philip, when Paul wanted to travel to some place, the, the Holy Spirit said, don't go. Mm. 16. Verse 6. Sixteen, it is. Yeah, Acts sixteen, verses six. And they went through the region of uh, Phrygia and Galatia, having having been for, forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Yeah. So they 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 were told by the Holy Spirit not to speak the word in that particular place, mm. and when they had come opposite Mysia. They attempted to grow into uh, go into uh, Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus did not allow them. Right. Yeah. So the, it, it's, a it's a adventurous uh, job, you know, because every day you hear his voice and you follow that voice. It's really wonderful. Yeah. I remember once, uh, once uh, I had seen a book in one shop in Anaculum. That was many, many years ago. And I wanted to buy that book, but I did not have the money. So I, I came back to the center I belong to. After I came back, one of my auntie, who's a nun, she came for the uh, came for the retreat. She'd be a grand aunt. And I, when 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 I felt like buying the book, I told the Lord, "If you give me the money, I'll buy the book." So then uh, one day, auntie came for the retreat. I did not know. She called me from the office in the, from that particular section, saying that she wants to meet me to come at the break time. So when I went to meet her spoke for some time and she gave me some money. And as soon as I got the money, I heard Doris would tell me, go and buy that book. Mm. So it is around 3.34. 3.34. So I told it's a long way now. By the time I go, the shop will be closed. And the Holy Spirit told me, the shop will not be closed. 
so then i had to take permission from a leader so i by the time i came to my section uh, got connected to the leader it became already 5 o'clock so normally 6:30 and now the shop closes or by 6 and now the shop closes so um, uh, then i took the permission came out of the place and got into the bus and you know the bus was an ordinary bus so another challenge so because the holy spirit told the shop will be open i got into that bus and the bus was in you know, ordinary bus you know they stop everywhere and they reach around 6:45 in alwa from alwa to this place about 45 minutes you have to change bus you have to move to a private bus and then go towards alwa and towards anakulam so i went went towards anakulam i got down it became around 7:30 now i know the shop closes at 6 because i i have seen many times i have seen the board you know mm. but i but i didn't remember exactly the what what was the time written at that time but because the holy spirit said the shop would be open i i went but i got down in the main road and i had to go a little bit inside so i don't remember whether now whether i walked or took an auto but one thing i know as i approached the shop i looked whether the gate is open or not and the gate was open i saw the time also it was mentioned 6 pm closing time now here it is already 7:30 7:35 when all So as soon as I entered the shop, that man screamed. You know, he said, "No, no, um, uh, the shop is already closed. We have already wound up." So I looked at him and told, the, "I have come from Chalakudi. The Holy Spirit told me the shop will be open." So he he, he just shook. You know, the, he just shook like this when I said that. So I walked into the shop, picked up the book, and came out. So now see, when you hear the voice of God, is very adventurous to follow the voice of God. Mm. is they hear his voice do new things meet new people it's really wonderful so that what let's just look at philip this is not the only thing that happened to him might have happened many times hmm. peter was praying one day afternoon on the rooftop he heard a voice saying i have sent some people go with them see is a new new is adventure he went with people whom he did not know also right yeah so it's a beautiful thing to follow the voice of god so fellowship with the holy spirit without hearing his voice and without obeying his voice very difficult to maintain the relationship hmm. okay now one important point here when we come to know the lord in the beginning and as you develop the relationship with the holy spirit the holy spirit won't tell you to go to bombay hmm. he won't tell you what is going to tell you pray forgive read the bible go for the mass so like a small small things he will tell you mm. so as you have grown the intimacy and know his voice then he will tell you different bigger things till the lord appeared to mother mary and spoke mother mary said let it be let it be done to me according to his word i am very sure that my, it was not the first time that mother mary heard the voice of the lord she might have heard the voice of the holy spirit many times in very small small things mm. by obeying them obeying them obeying them a greater obedience was necessary so it is not that something that surprisingly happened each day she used to know the voice of the lord and follow the voice of the lord so she knew the voice of the lord same thing with abraham and god told abraham leave your place of your forefathers and come to the place i show you mm. do you think it is the first time that abraham heard this no even though it is not mentioned in the bible i am very sure that he has heard abraham god's voice many times the voice of the holy spirit many times so as he was obeying little 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 god gave him a bigger responsibility mm. So that is why we have to be careful here. When we are getting intimacy with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you a lot of small, small things, and as we learn to obey, then He will tell. Why next level He will tell you some bigger, bigger things. So in the beginning, He will not tell you some big things to do. He will He will tell you small, small things. As you follow those things, greater responsibility will be given to you. So, or else we can go wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah. I go. I, I remember one man came and met me. He said that uh, 
I heard a voice. The Lord told me to go to Bombay and be there for some time. From there, I'll take you to Dubai and all. And he went to Bombay. He had lot of problem. Lot of trouble last year to sell the gold, this, that, and all, and come back to Kerala. So that is why little little things are we obeying. So that as we walk in the little little obedience, uh, we know his voice. Then he will tell you greater things. I remember once I was sitting at home uh, in Chalakudi, and uh, the Holy Spirit told, "Go to Bangalore and pray for my relations." You know. So immediately I went to the laptop. I immediately booked the ticket. I got the ticket immediately. So I knew the voice of the Lord. So I had to obey. So that 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 is why uh, when we get we come into intimacy with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, we come to know His voice. You know your wife's voice. You know your children's voice. You know your neighbor's voice. So obeying the voice of the Lord is very important as we grow in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And life is very adventurous if you are able to hear His voice every day. And many are afraid to hear because there are some things you don't want to do. So when you are praying, you are afraid. The Holy Spirit tell me that, tell me this, so you don't ask the Holy Spirit to talk to you. Mm. So He He speaks to us, and He loves to talk to us. So open your heart, open your life, and hear His voice every day. And you know, many years ago, I used to think God's voice is like thunder, and, and God's voices experience are like powerful lightning. You know, so all of us think, you know, it is something. Uh, Uh, what he calls the spectacular, mm. but every day the Lord is speaking to us. They're all supernatural. We're waiting for something spectacular when something supernatural is happening every day within us. I remember I met a boy in the bus. This boy, uh, when I looked at him, I had a doubt that he has come for the retreat and is going back from divine. And he had a bag with him also. And I was traveling to the Trishu railway station. To give some books to a priest for traveling to Bihar. So while while uh, I was talking to him, I told, "See, I am author of this book. Have you? I am author of a particular book. Have you? Have you seen that book?" He said, "Yeah. I, when I when I when I used to visit the bookstall, I have seen the book." And he told that the color of the book. And he told, "I felt to buy the book. I sensed to buy the book. So I told, 'Why did you not buy?' No, I sensed, but I did not buy. So he told, each time I went to the stall, I was sensing to buy.'" Now, if this boy would have heard the voice in a thunderous way, he would have obeyed. If he had heard in a very loud voice, hmm. "Go and buy that book," he would have gone and purchased. What he felt is just a in a prompting to buy the book, so he did not purchase. So I told, "See, I am the author, and I don't normally carry the book. I am giving you one book. I gave him the book." So sometimes we are waiting for something spectacular way God to speak to us. when is always every day speaking to a supernatural to the word of god to the inward witness within us to spontaneous thoughts to the teaching of the church through various spiritual people he speaks to us mm. so we need to pick up that and uh, follow then we will be beautiful relationship with the holy spirit life is very adventurous when god uh, speaks to you the disciples of christ had a adventurous life you know they went to new place they never saint thomas came to india he never knew the language of india also paul went to different places so they had a adventurous life so many people today also they are having adventurous life when they listen to his voice and follow the voice anybody got any question you can ask here on this topic we will move to the very important point a golden key to the relationship with the holy spirit i'm sure many will be having some questions here but just can ask yeah any questions one one question that people have in the mind is that uh, how do you know it is the voice of the holy spirit hmm how do you know the voice so one, one simple way is this that your heart turns towards god towards heaven hmm so we, when you hear something from the holy spirit you, your heart doesn't turn towards the world but turn towards god 
it can be anything maybe connected with your family or with your house or with your job or with anything not only spiritual things even secular things also when god speaks to you you know because your heart turned towards him and that is the easiest way to know whether the lord is speaking or not one of the very easiest then there are so many other methods are there like whether it is matching the character of god god is love god is holy so god is god is righteous so there is a character that god carries so his voice has the same character all that he says is according to his character so you have to see uh, whether whether it matches uh, the love the purity that god stands for then whether it is um, what you call scriptural no the voice you heard you heard whether it is, uh, is has a basis in the word of god so like that, there are many 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 markers are there by which you can know but one of the shortest route is you get inclined towards god more as you keep following the voice of god now the holy spirit speaks he can speak any time but for many people he speaks at night time through dreams mm. so one of the reason is because uh, uh, many times at day time our mind is blocking the voice of god yeah so when our mind is in rest he speaks to us i think that the word of god says many times we can find that and morning early morning so he speaks when you get up that time you can hear the voice of the lord morning to morning he spoke to me prophet isaiah says he teaches me morning to morning so morning also when he get up he speaks one man saw a beautiful vision of dew dew falling on plants and flowers and all it looked very beautiful but when the sun appeared the dew disappeared so he prayed and asked the lord what is the interpretation of this image and and the lord told uh, i speak to you when you sleep i give you wisdom but when you get up in the morning the first you should sit in silence for few minutes you have to sit in silence then you will hear what i have spoken to you at night so what happens if you don't sit at silence you will lose what lord has spoken to you at night time Yeah, uh, Sherin is asking you one point. How do we recognize Holy Spirit's voice when we have to make a decision? Yeah, yeah. see, the, the, when when it comes to decision making, you know, we have to be in the neutral gear. Mm. Neutral gear is that uh, uh, neither you are to the left or to the right. So that is one important key to of making decision. to know what god wants you to do so, so that is so we will in the future we will discuss about it i think this is a very big subject you know it's not something that you can finish in few minutes when you have a heart after god, after god uh, you pray the lord when we actually praying lord reveal to me your plan and purpose what is that you want me to do in this particular situation surely the lord will make it clear to us you know um, the lord speaks in whispers you know many times very like whispers he speak you know very small still voice but you know when people obey the voice of god the small still voice sounds very loud for whom for those who obey mm. so that is why we have, we we the we, whenever the lord speaks to i'm sure the lord is speaking and uh, when we need to obey there may be small small things but we need to obey them So as you spend more time reading the word of god you can know the voice very clearly we have to learn to still ourselves the whole, my holy spirit mindfulness and every day practice 
sitting so that we can know the voice of God. So the, um, uh, that's a city. So emergency, you know, I, I remember from Bombay, one man, he went to an embassy and he just came out and called me to know the will of God. See, in emergency, you cannot know the will of God. Very difficult sometimes. Even walking with God, it's fine. If one leg is with God and one leg is on the world, it's very difficult to know the will of God when we are uh, in, in an emergency. That is why we need to walk with God so that when emergency comes, or before it comes, we know the voice of the Lord. So, growing in the relationship with the Holy Spirit, is, it's very important that we obey Him. We obey Him. And always the voice of God will have the presence of the Lord. Mm. That, that we have to remember. When you when 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 Jesus heard the voice of the Father, the Bible says a cloud appeared, and then a voice came. So in the same way, when you if you're baptized with the Holy Spirit and you know the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, whenever you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, it is expected that you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So this is one important uh, marker. And one second marker is when we have a deep, deep peace, yeah. a very tangible peace. When you hear the voice of the Lord. But sometimes it needs a little bit of waiting, you know. Sometimes it is very quick. But sometimes we have to wait for some time, maybe a day, a week, maybe a month, maybe months. We need to wait for certain direction to receive. If you ask why, no idea. Mm. But uh, that is how the uh, Lord works, you know. Sometimes it's very quick to give a reply, but sometimes we need to wait to get a reply. Right. And one interesting thing, one video I saw the other day, I just, by mistake, I, I while, while, uh, yes, I saw one video. In that video, one man is commanding water from the bottle to come out and to come to his mouth. So the bottle is cut far away, keeps on commanding and commanding and water doesn't come out. So then he tells, see, the certain things we need not command. We just simply take the water and drink. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that, that is also we have to remember. God has already given us wisdom what we need to do. But in every situation, we have to pray first and then to the other direction. Mm. But he's having a heart attack. We are supposed to take him to the hospital. We know that is supposed we are supposed to do doctors have taught us we are supposed to do that. So we pray and we take the person to the hospital. So like that, um, there are certain things the Lord has taught us through his wisdom. Yes. But we need to put the Lord first and pray and then move. And as we move, the Lord will even if it goes wrong, also it will turn it to our good. Yeah. So, so I heard I heard someone uh, saying this uh, God's voice, the spirits, different ways of God speaking, and one way is that God's voice is hidden in the in His wisdom. Yeah, God's yeah. voice is hidden in His wisdom, which means, like what you said, is you know somebody is uh, sick, a heart attack, you know, you take him hospital, or uh, you know, uh, wife uh, or husband, uh, you know, discerning should I love my wife? You are supposed to love the wife. For that, there is no need of yeah, hearing yeah, the voice. Yeah, there is yeah. no need of hearing the voice of God. Yeah, yeah, so the, yeah. wisdom, the wisdom, the God's voice is hidden in the wisdom of God. That is why when you seek early in the morning, the wisdom of God, God gives. So there are certain things you don't wait for God to reveal it to you in a, in a, in a tangible voice because it's already yeah. been revealed. And that yeah, yeah, wisdom yeah. is what, uh, you know, which we require, as James said, those who lack wisdom ask God who gives to everyone uh, generously and ungrudgingly, James uh, 1 5, right? Uh, James yeah, 5, yeah. 5 says. So, yeah, this yeah. wisdom, so one, one of the ways in which the Holy Spirit speaks to us is through the wisdom of God, which has been given to everybody, and those lack need to ask Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, sometimes, you know, when, when we in an emergency, we make a decision, uh, we go forward. Uh, if you are really walking with the Holy Spirit, He will make you know whether the decision is correct or not. You can feel that. Uh, inward witness within you. Mm. In yeah. fact, uh, Father Daniel says this about uh, you know about this particular aspect. He says, uh, if you wanted to take a decision, what you need to do is go and spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. 
I mean, directly going to God and asking God to give a decision. It might take one day, two days, maybe 10 days. You sit alone and ask. Even if you do not get any response or you did not hear anything from God, but you had to take a decision and you went by your conscious, your yeah. you know, inner, 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 inner voice. Even if it is a wrong decision, it is God's responsibility to support you because you asked him. You probably have not understood what he has spoken, but it is you, it is you, it, it is to him he whom you asked because you did not go and ask anybody else. You went and asked God what is the decision, and God will honor that decision that you take, and he will support your decision, which I yeah. find it very, very uh, you know, sensible because. Today, uh, while we have uh, many people, you know, uh, helping us in taking decisions, but uh, that, uh, you know, beyond a point that can become a kind of an idol, you know, right. you, uh, you are not uh, taking any responsibility in your own life. And that is not what God wanted. God wanted you to take responsibility and to build a relationship, personal relationship with you. Even if it is wrong, you know, it is, it's, not, it's not going to be, end, it's not the end of life. Even if it is wrong, because you ask Jesus, because you ask the Holy Spirit, God is going to, you know, help you and support you. And that is how you grow. Uh, and yeah. not that, you know, always you have 100 people, uh, you know, walking with you uh, and, uh, you know, leading you. You have at some point in time, uh, get be, be alone with the Lord and uh, take a decision and move, uh, you know, uh, in the presence of Lord. And that, that's what I, I, I strongly feel uh, this is, uh, this Holy Spirit sessions are very important for us uh, in our daily spiritual walk. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you have to take a step of faith, you know, a step of faith. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we have to take a step of faith. So that, that is why we have to, but as you walk with God, we'll, we'll have that courage to take the step of faith also. In fact, even knowing the yeah, even yeah. knowing the voice of the Lord also needs faith to obey the voice of the Lord. Hmm. Even if you know the voice of the Holy Spirit, also it needs faith to obey. Hmm. Moses knew the voice of God, but still he was uh, reluctant in the beginning. You know, hmm. so you need fact, a lot of trust and faith. In fact, we took a decision in our business some time back. Uh, you know, and. Uh, it was a very, uh, very prayerfully thought through decision. But uh, later, uh, especially my wife took that decision later, uh, uh, she was uh, uh, proved or it was proved wrong. And uh, because it was, uh, and, and she had the grace to uh, accept that correction, that she was wrong. You know, that also comes from the Lord. You know, it is not that, uh, you know, when, uh, when you take a decision, all your decision, uh, will be true but if you if you depend upon somebody else to take an important decision uh, for you and if it goes wrong you not only blame god you also blame the other person because you told me that i did this you know yeah. and and that is exactly where uh, you know the things will go uh, you know uh, may not go well so personal decisions uh, i have heard people telling that uh, important decision affecting uh, your uh, your family your uh, uh, your life. Uh, normally, people leave it always uh, to uh, individual to take the decision. The, the spiritual uh, leaders, you know, the, the people who are walking uh, godly men and women, they always uh, help uh, or direct them to go and sit at the blessed sacrament and take a decision rather than they giving, uh, you know, the, giving God's decision uh, to them, which, uh, which is what something which we need to learn. But there's one very important thing that you have to understand here. If you're seeking the Lord and you're praying for a particular situation and you're not hearing anything, do not take a decision. Yeah. So that, that is, see, that is very important. God's silence is not yes. God's silence is never any yes. So we have to be very careful here. So God's silence is never any yes. So when you're praying for something and you don't hear from the Lord, don't, don't go, go for it. And keep waiting. Nothing will go wrong by waiting. Right. And as a brother was saying, if somebody gives me a message, tells me, 
and the Lord wants you to buy a car. And I go and buy the car. And tomorrow something goes wrong with it. And I meet with an accident or maybe the car gets spoiled. I'm not able to pay back the money. The responsibility lies with me, not the person who told me the message. Hmm. Right, right. So that, that thing all of us have to remember. When somebody reveals something to you, tells you something, it is your responsibility to wait whether it is from God or not, whether it is a time or not time whether it is time to do it or not to do it. I remember one, one man, one family got a message that God is going to give them a house. So they rushed and they purchased a house. Took a loan and purchased the house. Could not pay the money and uh, the bank took back the house. Mm. So they got shocked. They said, we heard from the somebody gave a message like this. But after a few years, you know, they got a house free. So that was the plan of God, purpose of God. So whenever you pray, pray for something, if you don't hear anything, I, I would suggest that uh, uh, don't go for it. Whether it's buying property or a, a major shift, major shift. Minor things, it's fine because God has given you the wisdom. But major things and all, we have to, if you don't hear, just wait until you hear, until God makes you know his will. And his yes is as equal to no. Hmm. So the problem with us, we always want to hear a yes. Who knows the silence can be the no. Right. So that's why we have to be careful. And one more important point is, no matter how many years you have been walking with the Lord, many times it is very difficult to discern uh, the, the plan of God immediately. So yeah. it will take time to understand the purpose and plan of God. So there's that here. Sometimes it's very quick and fast. Sometimes it's very slow and steady. So walking with the Holy Spirit brings a lot of difference in the life. You know his voice. And we have to obey his voice to grow in fellowship. So another very important point to grow in fellowship with the Holy Spirit is talking to the Holy Spirit. Mm. See, other all things can give you a foundation. Where you feel his presence, you feel his power, you feel his movement in you, all that will happen. But to have an intimacy with the Holy Spirit, you have to talk to the Holy Spirit. So without talking to the Holy Spirit, you cannot have an intimacy with the Holy Spirit. How can you, the barriers break when people talk. There was an ad by one uh, a telecommunication company. Barriers break when people talk. So how do you grow in intimacy with people? By not talking. How do you grow in intimacy with a person? By, by, by communicating with that person. Mm. So one of the very important golden key is uh, talking to the Holy Spirit. Mm. And this is a place where we, it's a big challenge because uh, it's always easy to talk to the Father and talk to Jesus also. Hmm. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, somehow we run out of words. Hmm. I think even uh, Pope Francis has made this point, said many of us, uh, we, we talk to the Father, we talk to Jesus, but we don't talk to the Holy Spirit. Hmm. So the communion of the Holy Spirit, when we talk to him. So that talking needs what you call consistency. Hmm. As we keep on regularly talking to him, we will find our relationship. I remember one man shared like this that uh, he was he used, he used to always thank the Holy Spirit and uh, for the help and for all the teaching he's receiving and every day he used to do that you know, on the regular basis to do. But he said I never felt anything. One day, two day, one week, one month, nothing I felt. I just kept on telling like this. But after six months, suddenly a light. It was as if the current was not there. When the sudden the current comes, suddenly he got plugged into the Holy Spirit. So sometimes, you know, uh, God allows this to happen. So that we can value that, uh, that time that we spend in communicating with the Holy Spirit. Hmm. So that is a beautiful experience. But some people, they are very quick to talk to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit talks back to them. So this is one thing that we have to develop. That is why I put up the two-page prayer, prayers to the Holy Spirit. It's, the prayers are 
the magic, you know. But what is the magic there? You spend some time with the Holy Spirit, talking to Him. How many of you have been praying this uh, the two page, two page prayer all the days? How many of you have been praying? Yes, brother. I'm praying, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how, what, what, what do you sense while praying? While coming, while praying those prayers? I feel the inner peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any, anybody else? I also pray, brother. Uh, uh, what, what, what did you sense while praying? I feel very, very touched, but more trust in the Lord. Yeah. Like yeah. believe in the Holy Spirit, like a, a confident that I, I yeah, can yeah. do it. I, I can, you know, expect. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, yeah. You're, 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 when you, when you, yeah, 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 yeah. So when you're saying that, you get into that fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So you feel that strength yeah. and that peace and all. Uh, anybody yeah. else? I also forward the prayer to people, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. Any, anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. Hello. Okay. Yes, uh, brother. I prayed it from today, and today was my day of being commissioned as a extraordinary. Uh, yeah, we can't hear you. Today, you today she me? started the prayers today. Uh, is what she's saying. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. I started and, from and? today because I was to be commissioned this morning in church. Uh, on the Feast of Corpus Christi as the Extraordinary uh, Minister for Holy Communion. And I found what peace. Okay. Uh, okay. Saying that yesterday, that you have to yeah, say yeah, this yeah. prayer every day. And I got peace within. Yeah, I yeah, got yeah. that strength. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, feeling peace and feeling his presence. And I think being wrote something, I just saw one writing. I did not, uh, I could not read it. No? They appeared and disappeared. Bina, Bina. Bina has uh, been a saying message. Prayer. Bina, yes, uh, Bina has been feeling anointing. Solomon, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's feeling his presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, he, yeah, yeah. Each day, as we keep on praying, see, the, there are one part and two part. You know, first part and second part also is there. So, one part in the morning, one part in the evening, and one third part is getting ready. So in the afternoon, so it will take only five minutes or four minutes, you know. Yeah. So um, we just hundred percent we can get into the fellowship with the Holy Spirit when you pray this uh, prayers every day. Yeah. I, I I pray every day. Yeah. Yes, brother. No, no, no. You are uh, talking about this uh, talking. You mentioned about talking to the Holy Spirit, no? So that is right, something right, right, which right. Uh, at least uh, three, four, uh, you know. Uh, Ministers who came and took the sessions for us uh, had said the same thing. Yeah. One of the key factors yeah. of building a uh, in relationship, intimacy with the Holy Spirit, uh, with God, is to talk to Him. Uh, that is uh, something which you are actually, you know, uh, emphasizing it now. Uh, talking to the Holy Spirit uh, will uh, improve, will increase the uh, con increase the relationship relationship with God. With the Holy Spirit, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that is something yeah, yeah. which is, uh, uh, which is I find I personally find it very uh, useful. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't hear the voice of God much, but yeah, I yeah. talk. I talk. I talk to him. He does not talk much to me, but I talk. Yeah. I keep talking to him. I'm like a chat. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah, don't. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think. No, no. We, we, yeah, yeah. You know what he said? No, you you can talk and then remain silent. Yeah. No, so I talk. Uh, I. <laughs> I don't talk. I rather I I talk to him uh, for a, everything now. You know, the sense uh, my daily uh, chores. Uh, so mm -hmm. I when when children get uh, when children fight, I said, Lord, I can't control Holy Spirit. You take over, and and invariably he takes over. That is what uh, I am seeing. And earlier I used to be in charge of it. I used right. to take the stick and they give them the you know give give them uh, my. Uh, my peace of mind but uh, ever since i started uh, involving the holy spirit uh, i am seeing he taking charge of many uh, situations the daily chores of my life 
uh, but uh, i am had to yeah. learn to hear the voice of god as much as you are saying yeah yeah, yeah. no when we take a step surely he will come forward okay yeah yeah i am so my, so yeah so this is something that we have to build on no like yeah. we invite him many times so uh, and as you keep on inviting inviting so you are talking to him you know so right. that, that that is how you have to do a oh, holy spirit me holy spirit teach me so many things all the areas of the life you can ask him so then by that you are communicating with him so that communication will really be helpful it will be really be helpful i i tried to put all this prayers into a small book a booklet also mm. many people from dubai and all they have told me also they have asked me also like that to do it in malayalam and uh, make it a book so it can be kept in the pocket mm. so it be used uh, regularly you know wherever we go mm. so um, uh, yeah so i found that talking to the holy spirit is one important key one of the most important key to have a relationship with the holy spirit see other things many people are doing they are praying going for the mass reading the bible praise and worship all are doing so many are feeling the power of god and all but to get connected with the person to of the holy spirit we need to talk to the holy spirit and that is why this uh, prayers we I, i gave it to you all so i spent every day every day uh, talking to the holy spirit through this prayers and i also found while praying this prayer certain prayers you feel more power certain prayers you feel more peace so th- those prayers are needed for you you need to get answer from the holy spirit hmm. to this prayers it can be it can be oh would help me to be sensitive to your voice hmm. so when you're praying you're feeling the press that means you need to become very sensitive to your voice i think brother joseph has to be a little more sensitive to his voice not yeah. that he's not talking to you Yeah, you have, to, you have to pray this. Holy Spirit, make him more sensitive to your voice. Yeah. So um, uh, that then automatically you will you will come to know how he speaks. See, the Holy Spirit has a favorite way of speaking to each one of us. There is a favorite way he speaks. Some people it may be. Some people it may be still small voice. Right, right. Some people see. Some people hear. Some. There will be more of the word of God. Whatever situation they go, they will get a word. It will come either in the mind or while reading the word of God, they will get. Mm. So the Holy Spirit has a favorite way of talking. So it can be any way. But then, even though there is a favorite way also, we should desire also that it speaks to you other ways also. Mm. So the basic will be a favorite way of speaking. So I think, uh, brother, I think you have to, you to, need to pray. that you become more sensitive to the holy spirit mm. sensitivity up to the holy spirit is a gift of god but every time it doesn't give that gift to everybody mm. every time if you can give you the gift or you become very sensitive to his voice right. but he doesn't do it that way sometimes it appears and then disappear because he want that you should seek him mm. in this area so that that is the thing so so many things are there where god want us to ask him again and again why why did the parable the parables were taught to people and they never understood the disciples had to come and ask the lord to explain to them then jesus explained to them so the lord wants us to go to him and ask and that that, that is how we fellowship with him so talking to the holy spirit is one important key we have to build it up mm. so i think that prayers are helpful as you keep praying those prayers to the holy spirit uh you you learn how to communicate with him do it every day as part of your life right there is a second part to it if anybody has not got i will send it to uh brother yes, joseph the second, send it. second part you did not send me yeah yeah i i thought see sending all two then then no send one let them get yeah, 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 yeah. exposed to i i, I was i am also <laughs> not pushing too many messages to people because that will clog yeah. their whatsapp uh, you know and yeah. the phone and uh, uh, you know yes uh, you know sometimes we need to be we need to too many messages also can can uh, people can oversee it and uh, you know ignore it yeah yeah so here the reason is because i send one because all are not exposed to it so then let them pray first one yeah let them know its value of it then we send second one yeah so that's it. so you, you need to pray those prayers Yeah. it hardly take 5 or 10 minutes to pray so we are ending the session we are going to pray for some time yeah. yesterday it became 7 o'clock 
Yeah. So I think many of them will be troubled also. So we'll we'll spend some time in prayer. Any any questions? You can ask. Hi, brother, uh, praise the Lord, Leander here, brother. Ah, uh, yeah, praise God, Leander. Just hold on. There's one question here on the screen. Just hold on, brother Jos. Yeah, in challenging uh, situations, can feel the fruits of the Holy Spirit manifesting, especially when I sense that I'm losing my cool. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, really, yeah. that's very cool, Anjana. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing I want to share to you. The Holy Spirit has the fruit of the Spirit. All the fruit is in Him. So when you fellowship with Him, you will feel the fruit according to your necessity. Hmm. If you want peace, the peace will come. When you want uh, faithfulness, faithfulness will manifest. When you want uh, joy, joy will be there. Yeah. So um, uh, this thing we'll talk later when we get an opportunity more again and again. We will speak on the in the very detail about the fruit of the Spirit. So fellowship with the Holy Spirit will bring fruit of the Spirit into your life. You cannot create it. When you have been praying so much, Lord, give me patience, give me patience, they're still struggling after many years of praying. So what do you need to be get plugged, get plugged into the Holy Spirit? Like Anjana says, uh, in challenging times, I feel a coolness, a peace of the Lord, uh, peace of the Holy, the fruit of the peace coming into her. And that should be happening to all of us. And that will keep us calm, you know, not make us mad. So that's it. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, Leander, what is the question you want to ask? Uh, brother, uh, I was, you know, I was uh, praying, you know, I used to experience fire in my body, like, you know, uh, fire fire in my spirit, I used to feel like, you know, the, it's gone now, you know, certain problems in my life, now the fire, I can experience the presence of God, like fire in my body, like, you know. Ah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. And going through some rejection also, how to overcome all these problems? And I, as you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you'll remove that pain. Yeah. Okay, that is that is something that you need to do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. There, there is one word. Uh, anybody else? No, brother. No, nobody else. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's and, one. There's one word the Holy Spirit gave long time, many years ago, and that that word is a very powerful word. Uh, when when I decided to write a second book on the Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I named it Holy Spirit. I love you. I I love you. So when we were inaugurating the Konkani book, uh, Goan Konkani book in Goa in Banda, uh, the bishop when he saw the book Holy Spirit, I love you, he said, "I am surprised. I have never heard this word." He said, "I am surprised," and he told all, "I have never heard. We have heard I, Jesus, I love you, that I love you, but nobody. I have never heard Holy Spirit, I love you." So one group I was sharing, you know, I was just telling everybody about intimacy with the Lord. And when you say, Holy Spirit, I love you, what happens? So one girl came in and she got irritated. She thought, why they're telling uh, Holy Spirit, I love you? And she went out. And she just came in and she went out. And later on in the evening, while she herself told, Holy Spirit, I love you, suddenly the bitterness she had inside her, she had a bitterness towards someone that went off. And in our group, there was a girl who was in a prayer group since long and she had a bitterness against her father. So when she said, Holy Spirit, I love you, that bitterness left. So when you say the word, Holy Spirit, I love you, in difficult times, in sad times, you feel the power of God. You get plugged in to the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. One man who was in the group, he got irritated. He said, how do I say, Holy Spirit, I love you, when I've told a thousand times to girls? So he said to many girls, I have already told, I, I love you, I love you. Now I have to tell. I said, see, it doesn't matter if you have told girls, I love you. You said 10,000 times to the Holy Spirit, I love you, Holy Spirit. So this word, Holy Spirit, I love you, uh, plugs you into the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. When temptation comes, when difficult situation comes, say, Holy Spirit, I love you. And you can feel the presence. Just all of you, just uh, shut your eyes and say, Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. Say it few times, three or four, five times you can say.
the Holy Spirit is so close that you can feel his uh, cool presence around you. So we'll all uh, praise and worship the Lord. We'll pray in tongues. We'll pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we'll, we'll pray to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we'll pray that God will give us new tongues and interpretation of tongues. Yeah. Today while praying daytime and all, did you get any interpretation of tongues while praying? Anybody prayed at home personally? We have to experiment, you know, when you have a gift, you have to use it and then wait and wait to listen what the Holy Spirit is saying. Anybody put into practice by praying in tongues? Did you hear anything? The interpretation of what you are praying? So this is something that you need to do. Like as you keep on doing again and again, you, you develop that ministry in your life. I pray that night in my group, brother. Yeah, okay. Okay. For 45 minutes. Ah, okay. And in between also when we pray in groups, yeah. we all pray in tongues. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you try to hear the interpretation? No, brother. You have to try to hear. You have to desire. When you're praying in tongues, you should desire. Lord, I want to hear what I'm saying. I Speak to me. And as you say like that, no? I get, I get the interpretation sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So sometimes can become more time as we keep on. See, it is as the Holy Spirit wills. But we can position ourselves to receive it. So as you keep on praying every day, uh, as you keep on praying in tongues, and you just wait, after praying for some time, and then again, wait, again, to start praying in tongues. So like that, you allow the Holy Spirit to work. Paul says, no, those who pray in tongues should pray for interpretation. Mm -hmm. So after we finish our praying and we'll go for uh, silence for a few minutes that time, any of you all can pray, unmute, and if you feel, like if you, if you feel, you can unmute yourself and pray in tongues. You can speak in tongues. And others will just sign, silently sit and ask the Holy Spirit to give you the interpretation. So when you get that interpretation, you immediately unmute and you say that interpretation, what it is. So at the end of the prayer, this is what we are going to do. See, there is a language God gives us which we usually use. And suddenly the language will change and become another language for some time. Whenever you, at that time, you feel prompt to say something, you just say, unmute and say it, say it in tongues. And others, we all of us will wait to listen, asking the Holy Spirit to give us the interpretation. And I, anyone who gets the interpretation can unmute and say what is said. So this is what we're going to do at the end of this. So this is how we become more, we learn how to operate in the charisms. Yeah. So nothing to be afraid of, we, we will... Uh, and we will we'll, we'll pray, we'll pray in tongues and we'll ask for interpretation. Okay. Anybody who's get the interpretation can unmute and say it. Okay. So the tongues can be for two, three minutes, but the interpretation, interpretation can be only maybe a word also. And sometimes two people can get two interpretation also. So don't worry about the result. We will just uh, praise and worship the Lord uh, uh, and we'll go into silence and then and we will ask the Lord to give us uh, this uh, uh, operate this gifting so that we will anybody who gets the uh, uh, is, is inspired to say you feel that inspiration to say sometimes it comes in tongue sometimes some stomach it will come sometimes it will come in the lips and you feel like saying so you just say it, uh, whatever it comes in that language and if anybody gets the interpretation they will share so we'll try nothing nothing wrong we have to try when we learn driving we keep trying out no? different techniques that is how we do it and that's how we grow so let's all pray. Let's all unmute and open our mouth and praise God and pray in tongues and worship the Lord to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> 
ஹாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலாலா
Yeah, you can share. Unmute and share it. I word yes. came to me in shallow. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, I got the same from uh, Colossians 3 uh, 15. May the peace of Christ overflow ah, right. in your hearts. For to this end, you are called to be one body and be thankful. Yeah, yeah right, right. So we got interpretation through the word and through the word uh, peace also. Okay. So again, once again, we'll play. Uh, uh, yeah, M, what, what do you have to say? Anything? Uh, one verse came to me, this 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Do not okay. slumber, but be watchful and awake. Right, right. Okay. Okay. So uh, again, we will um, uh, we'll mute and pray in tongues. As you get the flow, anyone else? Or maybe the same person also, no problem. Anyone else also? Let everybody do it. Practice it now. God is moving. There's an anointing for this. And as you, as you get the flow in the tongues, you immediately mute um, unmute and say and then as uh, as the person is saying in tongues all, all of us shall pray to give an interpretation and as you get the interpretation just uh, unmute and say it okay let's start hallelujah thank you lord praise you lord thank you jesus thank you jesus. hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, <laughs> Ribeke dranda rashelli hera nandara bakma kukurisha stilari. Rimeke drosha kora hala led vidrina stari kishisha strula. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. So anyone can share the interpretation? I see a 60 versus 18. I see a 60 versus 18. Anybody else can share? Violence shall no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Anybody else got any interpretation? You can share it, unmute and say. Yeah, I will lead you step by step. I will never abandon you. So this is a message to somebody. Okay, we continue the third, third time. Uh, pray in tongues. As you get the flow in, in tongues, uh, un unmute and say it in, say the tongues and then speak in tongues and then we will interpret. So we'll start again. Oriya lama shantari lama suku shukara apa paga sunku shukari lama santo shukara parang. Oriya lama shantari ke shikara apa shunturu ku shukri lama sunko pa. Koko suku shukara mama kasi ke shikari lama koko shumara apa sunu. One Thessalonians five six. Oh, that was one for the east earlier one brother. Now, okay. So share the interpretation. Any, any anybody got the interpretation? Maybe thoughts, maybe words, maybe images you can share. Deliverance. Ah, okay, okay. It's a prayer for it was a prayer for yeah. deliverance. Okay. The Holy Spirit praying the for deliverance. The Lord will go before you. Isaiah 52 verse 
I say a fifty two. Any anyone else got an interpretation? So once again, the last time we'll pray in tongues. We get a flow, uh, unmute and speak. And others keep on praying, Lord, speak to me, talk to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> So you can share, you can share. Fear not. Fear not. Rejoice and thanks. Give thanks. Sweet anointing of the Holy Spirit. I will never leave you or forsake you. How beautiful are the feet of those who proclaim the good news. Do not remember the former things, Isaiah 43, 18, 19. So we'll all just share your experience about this. Anyone can share what experience you had at this prayer time. Uh, and the images you saw, what you heard from the Lord. Uh, you can share. A few minutes you can share. Tears are flowing. Okay, good. Let it continue to flow. Anybody can share? I got a prophetic word. My child, I love you. You are mine. Yeah, that's I nice. I love you with an everlasting love. Love, right. I choose you to do greater things than what I did. This last word, I did not understand. I chose you to do greater things than what I did. Yeah, yeah. In John chapter 14, you find that, I think 14 or something. Jesus said, because I go to the Father, uh, you will do greater things than I have done. Yes. So the Lord will be wanting to do some great things through you. Yes. Things Jesus has not done. Yes, the other uh, the thing also I got that I brought you out of darkness into my marvelous light. Right. Uh, brother, I had an image of uh, a heart. Uh, I felt that uh, the Lord was healing somebody's heart related issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some healing has taken place regarding heart, regarding stomach and all the messages are there. Something kind of hurt somebody is being healed and all. Brother, I have been yes. gifted with the gift of the word, which I use in uh, our prayer ministry on a daily basis. Today, the okay. Lord told for the purpose of interpretation of tongues as well, I can use okay. the gift of the word. Uh, uh, that is, I lift the word of God as a biblical verse that is in, on a sheet of uh, paper or a card. And I pronounce okay. it to the prayer group at the end of our prayer ministry when the prayer petitions come. But today the okay. voice of the Lord was very clear that for the purpose of the gift of interpretation too, 
I can use the same formula and uh, convey things to the entire prayer team as to what is the gift of tongues that are you know coming out as in the course of praise and worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. See, interpretation comes in different ways. Okay. Yeah, it comes in different. It doesn't come only in one particular way. It comes in different okay. ways. That is, that is a way which God is leading you. Do it. Go forward. Okay? Fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I was craving for this gift of interpretation for long. And of course, your workshop today really gave me that uh, understanding. And it's an eye-opener for me. All glory right. to God for that. Right, right. These are as simple, you know. We make it complicated, you know. Anybody want to share anything? Brother Philip? You are there today? I think. I don't think he's there. Uh, he's not there today. Okay, okay, okay. So let us thank the Lord for this session. Anybody else to say anything? You want to say anything? Yeah, so I just wanted to say tomorrow we are starting a new series which is on the grace or law. Living in grace or law. So we will have... Uh, uh, that series going on for a week. Uh, then uh, after that, uh, we do not know who else. But then uh, session season three of the Holy Spirit will uh, happen in the month of July. Uh, with exact date, uh, we will let you know. Uh, those who are part of uh, the mailing list, uh, my mailing WhatsApp group uh, will get the information. Others who wanted to be, uh, please send me a WhatsApp message. It is a broadcast message. So I don't send... Uh, any discussion message, only uh, information. Uh, so some people ask, I am not in the group. Yes, if you are getting any of my messages, that means you are part of my group. So I will keep you all posted uh, on uh, the messages. Please spread on the word, spread the word to as many people and uh, let us uh, build uh, uh, you know, the kingdom of God together and for the glory of God.